Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and if you want to see me use a Mylar emergency sleeping bag, as well as make it into a shelter, go ahead and stick around. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and today we're going to review a couple of emergency sleeping bags that are sent to me by the Dow Tech Company. Now, these emergency sleeping bags aren't ones I've had any experience with in the past, although I have used those types of products before, and I assume they're going to be very similar to those. Now, they were sent to me with the idea of me giving them an honest review, and that's what I'm going to do for you guys, okay? So, they came in a two-pack. And they're in individually wrapped in their little bivvies here. But basically, uh, the Mylar sleeping bags are really nice because they're super compact. They do a good job. And they can be used for shelter as well. So I like these. I carry them in all my go bags. And if you haven't seen my go bag videos, I'll go ahead and put those up here on the top of the video for you to click on. But these are going to be pretty much the same as any other, I would assume. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and test them and show you if they work or not. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take one of these, since they sent me two, and I'm going to use it as a sleeping bag. So tonight when it gets down into about the 50s, I'll crawl into the bag. We'll take the temperature outside and inside of the bag and see um, how efficient it is at collecting the body heat and keeping everything uh, where you want it to be. And at the same time, I'll take the other sleeping bag, and I'm actually going to go outside and try to make a uh, structure, like a makeshift shelter, so that way you guys can kind of see um, what these are capable of. I do like the aspect of having these um, because you can do so much with them and I am going to try to demonstrate some of that for you all today. Now this is something that was given to me to review so I want to make sure I'm honest and transparent with you all about it. Um, they're not paying me any additional money, they just sent me the product for free and I am willing to check it out because it is something that's relative to survival and preparedness, okay? And I'm not going to knock a product until I actually give it a try. So let's uh, try it out together and see how it goes. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is stick it here on the uh, workbench. We're gonna get a close-up view. I'm gonna open it, take it out of the packaging, and try to get an idea of uh, how everything looks, how it's packaged, and you know whether or not on first glance it seems to be a quality product. Okay, so here I have the two emergency Mylar sleeping bags. Uh, they're still in the packaging, the original way that it came. As you can see here, it does have a label on it. The label doesn't really tell you a whole lot, but that's kind of what's expected from these type of products. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open it and we'll just kind of see what everything looks like from the inside, all right? Let's bust this open. Okay, dump these guys out. Perfect, all right, so. Looks like they come with instructions, which, you know, is always good, even though I know a lot of us in this community don't read anything, so there's that. But, you know, if you want to, at least they have them, okay? So the bivvies seem like they're decent quality. Typical of what you expect from a bag like this for storage. But I do like that it comes with this, and it definitely is reusable. Now, if you can ever get it back inside, it might be a different story, but hey, who cares? You're just trying to use it to survive, correct? All right, so here we are. You unroll it, you can kind of see it. And it looks like it's about orange on the outside and the silver mylar co uh, color we're all used to on the inside. So that works for me. All weather emergency bag. So you could actually uh, read that a lot of different ways, but you know, I'm pretty sure that they um, want it to be a sleeping bag, okay? Doesn't look like it says that anywhere on here. Um, let's see, retains heat, essential, perfect size. All right, well, we'll see if uh, we can test that theory. So let's go ahead and open her up. I'm going to leave the other one in the bag because they're the exact same thing. So I'm just going to throw this off to the side, okay? All right. Open that up. And what do we have here? Exactly what I expected. So it's got this kind of nice, uh, like, hunter orange color to it, which could be good for signaling, especially if you're looking to be found. Um, but, you know, on the inside, it has your typical Mylar color, right? So that's everything that we would expect from something like this. Um, if you come over here to the opening side, you can see inside of the sleeping bag. And it is extremely thin when you actually unfold it all the way. As you can tell, it is literally paper thin, but it seems pretty durable. Um, if I pull on it hard enough, of course, it's going to tear. Um, but, you know, that's expected from something that's this thin, right? Um, but all in all, like, it seems like it's going to be durable enough to at least lay in. Oh, look at that. I already tore it, guys. So we'll see. I mean, this seems pretty thin. This seems... Uh, like it could tear pretty easily and if I'm out there laying on the grass, we'll find out what really happens, right? But I did already put a tear in it and, uh, you know, I don't think this Mylar stuff supposed to be abused or, you know, pulled on super hard, but I didn't really pull it that hard. So just a heads up on that, all right? Okay, so um, this is about all it is. There's not much to see here. I think we all know exactly what we're getting into when it comes to this kind of stuff, uh, but you can see how compact this thing became. 
and you know how well it folded up and how easy it is to transport. So if the idea is just staying in this for a, a night or two and trying to uh, maintain body heat and survive until you get uh, rescued or maybe until uh, uh, you find a better way to set up shelter or camp, uh, maybe it'll do the job. So we'll have to test that theory outside and see if the temperature actually holds and then uh, see about that tearing and see if maybe there's any uh, uh, saving grace there for uh, you know how functional it is after the fact. I mean, I did pull on it pretty hard considering you know how thin the material is, um, but it did tear, so that's something I want to make sure you guys are aware of, okay? It looks like this black line down here might be uh, you know where it's seamed together, and that seems a little bit tougher. It's got a little bit more um, yeah, strength to it. As you can tell, I'm actually pulling pretty hard right now, and it's not tearing. So yeah, I mean, that's got a lot more durability to it. So at least the seams are, um, you know, pretty strong and reinforced. So that's good for, you know, the aspect of it being a sleeping bag. Um, but I just want to go pulling on this really thin mylar material super hard if you don't have to, okay? All right, we'll go ahead and take it outside and we'll see what else we can do with it. All right, so as I said before, we're going to go ahead and take one of these Mylar emergency sleeping bags and turn it into a survival shelter. Now, um, I am planning on actually using it with this tree and that tree. We're going to actually uh, make a tow line across the two, and I'm going to set up the shelter like a um, kind of a hangover uh, tent style shelter. So um, what we'll do is uh, go ahead and open this up and maybe give you guys some perspective on the size of this sleeping bag now that we're outside and you can see a little bit more of how big it is. I was able to put it back inside the bivy, which I did find as a positive. We'll get rid of that. And we'll unroll this. There we go. As you can see, I'm six foot three and it's taller than me. So they make sure that everyone uh, on your average, you know, size scale can fit inside one of these, right? So we'll go ahead and open her up. And like I said before, all the hems and seams are actually reinforced, which is nice. You know, you can't really tear them. So that's a bonus in my book. And uh, they do have it at the bottom too for where your feet go. So when you are using it like a sleeping bag, it is gonna be um, uh, sealed up as best as it can be and hopefully keep most of that warmth in. As you can tell, the material itself is very thin, but you know, that's what's expected from these sleeping bags. They're supposed to be very compact, lightweight, and easy to travel with. So uh, the main thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a knife I'm going to slice down the edge right here, and then I'm going to uh, use the uh, uh, other hem on this other side as a way to um, kind of set that on top of our slack line, which is going to be 550 paracord. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get that all set up, and then we'll you know start this process and give you an idea of what it was I was thinking of, of trying to use it as a survival shelter. And of course, there's many, many ways you can do this. There's a lean-to method. There's a, there's a stake method. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but I'm just going to show you one way that's a little easier to deal with today so you can kind of see it in action. Okay, so I've got my 550 cord here wrapped around this tree that we're going to be using as uh, one of the stand points for this shelter. And what we've got right here... A bunch of 550 okay so we're gonna just ba basically tie like your basic survival knot to attach it to this tree i am not a knot expert by any means but i did go in boy scouts so i guess i should know a little something right so i'm just gonna pop like a loop up over here and come through here and pull this excess through the loop okay and then you're gonna actually take this side of the paracord stick it in through here and then basically you pull on this side and then once you get this kind of like a little flip that the knot does, like so, we actually now have a very taut line. And as you can see, I can pull on them both and it's not going anywhere. So we got a taut line, we're good to go. I don't know if it's called a bowling or a trucker's hitch or whatever it's called, I can't fully remember, but all I know is that this knot seems to do a good job whenever I'm tying things to stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and run the line to the other tree and we'll get the rest of this shelter going. Okay, so now I'm at the other tree. I'm gonna have to make a slip loop in order to get this line hot enough for it to be good for a shelter. So I take this uh, remaining line here that's kind of uh, hooked onto the other tree. I'm gonna go ahead and make a loop like so, and then I'm gonna pull another loop through it, right? So once I pull that loop through it, and I do need this loop to be pretty big because I need the uh, whole uh, spool of my paracord to fit through it. I'm gonna just kind of tighten that up right there we go okay and now i have a slip loop so i can fit which would usually be the end of your rope but as i'm trying to conserve my paracord here and not have to cut it if i don't necessarily need to i'm going to run that all the way through 
All right. And as you can see here, the line is now through the slip loop, right? So what does this do? It lets me put a lot of tension on it. So what I'm gonna do is pull until I get a little bit of tension and then I'm gonna pull out this way away from it, which will then really tighten it down. So let me get around the other side and start pulling. All right, one sec, I got the uh, tripod in the way, I guess. All right, so give me one second. All right, so as you can see, it lets me get this line super tight by having that slip loop. It is really tight, which is what you need for a shelter because you want the emergency mylar blanket, basically, or sleeping bag to drape itself over this line. And it has to be super tight for that. All right, so once I get into this position and it's really tight, you have to do a secondary knot that basically comes up over the top, okay? Comes over the top, through this line, like so, and then back under, if I can get it to work while not letting go of too much uh, of this uh, tightness. And it, it's basically a hitch knot, but it makes it so it doesn't untighten, as you can see. Okay, so hitch knot's tightened. Another loop knot. Everything's a loop knot. That's how these things work, I guess. And now we're good. we got a super tight line here, as you can tell. Perfect. All right, so there's enough... Look at that, perfect, all right. So yeah, it could be a little tighter, but for what we're doing today, it's gonna serve the purpose. And that's just something I wanted to show you all is how to set those knots up and get that uh, line so it's tight enough for it to actually be a shelter line. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut down the hems here and open up the sleeping bag to make it more of like a, a blanket uh, in order to drape it over the line here more appropriately and you know make it more like a shelter. So I'm gonna go ahead and bust out my knife and we're gonna go ahead and cut this thing apart. All right, so, got it all opened up. As you can see, now what we basically have here, put the knife away real quick, is a twice the size as usual survival blanket because usually it's more um, you know, made for you to just cover yourself with, whereas this is a sleeping bag, which is meant to encase you, so a little bit bigger, right? Which is why I like the sleeping bags better than the blankets. So, we'll go ahead, get this excess out of here. And let's go ahead and drape it over the line. Just kind of see how much surface area we cover and how much of a shelter we get out of it, okay? Go ahead. And like I said earlier, I'm using the hem on this one side here to try to ride the line perfect okay all right so obviously it's not looking like a tent quite yet but i'm gonna get to that right now all right, so another part of this shelter is gonna be how you're gonna get the corners down in order to actually give yourself a little bit of coverage. Obviously right now, it's basically like a limp blanket hanging over a string, right? So you're gonna need some kind of stakes or if you're gonna improvise in the woods, you can use wood stakes, then you can use your leftover paracord to tie it to the stakes and puncture a hole through the corners and kind of do like a uh, an eyelet kind of ordeal there. But you know, I have these stakes right here, which I usually carry in my truck. They are just kind of heavier duty tent stakes, which I prefer over the plastic style one so nice metal tent stakes they can take a beating if you need them to I'm gonna go ahead and apply these to the corners of the basically tent that we're making right now and then uh, we'll see how it looks at the finished product Okay, so here we have the finished product. Now, obviously it's not gonna be the nicest, most luxurious tent you ever stayed in in your life, but it's gonna do the job of providing a basic shelter, getting you out of the rain if something like that's going on, or hopefully uh, keeping a little bit extra heat for you too if there's a little bit of a weather scenario going on outside. So 
honestly, it's just makeshift, it's survival, it's very easy to put together, and it didn't take a lot of effort, as well as uh, it doesn't take a lot of supplies to carry around with you for uh, being able to do it. So all of us carry 550 cord, you know, somebody's gonna have a Mylar emergency blanket or sleeping bag, and uh, this one's doing the job so far as being a makeshift shelter. So I'll go ahead and show you. So these stakes, are just in here by hand. I mean, I didn't have to use a mallet or anything like that. They're very easy to put in and put down. So, not a big deal, at least here where the ground is soft. If you're in a different environment where you have harder ground, you're gonna need a hammer or a mallet of some kind. And you can see that I can actually get inside here. As far as I'm concerned, that's America's ass. There's enough room for me to turn around. Hey everybody, I'm out here in the makeshift shelter and uh, I gotta keep it somewhat quiet because I do have neighbors at least a few acres away and I already know they think I'm a freaking weirdo, so. Um, I do have uh, the shelter I put up earlier using the same Mylar material and now I'm in one of the emergency Mylar sleeping bags. And so far it's doing a really good job. Um, the ground right now is at around 55 degrees and inside of the bag it's measuring at around 85. So I'll go ahead and show you the measurements right now. I'm trying to stay kind of enclosed in it for the time being in order to get a good reading on, you know, how much body heat it actually can retain. But um, I'll show you guys, you know, the temperatures on the reader right now just so you can kind of check it out. So let's see. Let's get a ground temperature. Yeah, ground temperature right now is at 51.8. See if you guys can see that. Uh, let's see. I mean, it's like backwards or something. Uh, either way, it, I promise it's 51.8. <laughs> One more try. 51.8. Maybe if I do it upside down. How do mirrors work again? I don't know. It's 51.8. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and get the inside of the sleeping bag. And that's measuring at 88.8. .8. As you can see here, and since they're the same numbers twice, it's not reversed in the camera, so that's nice, isn't it? All right, so 88.8. .8. I'd say that's a pretty substantial difference in temperature. Uh, we're looking at 37 degrees total so far. And I'm gonna be out here for a little bit longer, so we'll see if I can get some uh, some other readings and then we can see where we're, uh, what kind of performance we're getting out of the product. All right, everybody, I just took another reading and it's at the same exact reading it was before, 88 degrees inside of the bag and 51 degrees on the outside. So we got a 37 degree difference, which I think is totally fine. And I think the bag is doing exactly what it was designed for. I just think that um, it's not gonna necessarily improve any more throughout the night. If the temperature got colder outside, it would probably show some improvement there, but it's not actually forecasted to get much colder than 51 tonight anyway. So um, I think that a really good test for this bag would be to be uh, in the middle of, you know, the negative 20 degree weather we have out here in North Dakota. But, um, you know, until that time comes, I'm not going to be able to do that review. But, hey, you know, when winter rolls around, which could be in like the next four or five days, knowing how it works out here, um, I'd be more than happy to do a review of it in negative temperatures and just see what happens. So, um, you know, I think that uh, all in all, the product is exactly what it was advertised to do. I think it is exactly what it was advertised to be. And I don't think you're going to go wrong buying this product. Um, I don't think it has anything better or worse than any other similar products out there that do the exact same thing. They're an emergency sleeping bag made of mylar that's made to trap body heat and be super lightweight and very compact and easy to carry around. And it's all those things. And I just decided to show um, the fact that you could make it into a shelter as well to kind of give you guys um, some other ideas about things you can do with these items. So, um, you know, I think honestly, I'm just going to wrap this up and go back inside. I don't want to have to be out here all night just to see the difference of maybe four or five degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, 
honestly, I hope this review really helped you guys. I hope you understand. I'm trying to be as transparent as I can with you all about any free products I received to review. And uh, I think I showed you guys that, you know, it is exactly what it says it is. So, um, you know, if you do like this kind of material, please like, share, and subscribe. I try to put out decent content for everybody, and I uh, really enjoy doing it. So if you guys want to keep it rolling, you know, try to support the channel and help me out with that. Um, and without anything else to say about this product, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper. Coming down with the